and welcome back to the Automaker Knits, or welcome if it's your first time. Uh, my name is Judy, and this is my podcast where I talk about all of the things that I've been knitting, designing, dyeing, crocheting, and all the happenings here around the log cabin. I live here with my husband Joe and our black cat Meryl, and we are at the base of the White Mountain National Forest. Um, this is episode 69. I hope you have something to work on or maybe a cool drink. Uh, it's still pretty warm here, although much better than it's been. So we're having a little break, but today it's supposed to be like 75 degrees Fahrenheit. I am wearing uh, a finished object, which I believe I showed you last time. This is my Casera T. It has these really pretty uh, shoulder straps. And here, let me look back to tell you a little bit about it. Because Sarah T, I used a US 5 and 7 needle. And I used Sand Niskarn Lina. Um, the bottom is just, it, there's no like ribbing or anything on the bottom. It's got a nice drape, very flowy. And, um,. It took me five skeins or 600 yards to knit up this t-shirt and I highly recommend it you start with the beautiful lace uh, shoulder shoulder saddles saddles yeah and then you pick up stitches and you work it from there this was a free pattern I got from knit picks so anyway this feels really good today um, happy that I'm wearing something that's not merino. Today I have four finished objects. I have two works in progress and a bunch of acquisitions. So we'll see if we have time to get through everything, but for now I just wanted to kind of come on, catch you up on what's been going on for the last few weeks. It's been really busy and really crazy, so... Yeah, here we are. And the glare on my glasses is making me insane. Sorry, I am sorry. I try every episode to, to get rid of it. But if I want to have any kind of lighting where you guys can see what I'm working on, I just have to. It's, it's, not, it, it's not the brightest up here in the loft. And so, yeah, here we are <laughs> doing the best we can. All right. Finished objects. The first finished object I want to show you. Uh, this is a pattern that was just recently released, which is my Magic Heel Slipper Socks. And I'm pretty sure I, I was still working on these the last time. But anyway, they are finished. And, oh, maybe I showed them to you. Honestly, I apologize if I already have, but, um... I can't remember from one podcast to the next what I've shown you or what was mostly finished or but anyway these are the ones that I knit uh, using Lopi as uh, la, 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 Icelandic wool and here we are this was Let Lopi which is just 100% Icelandic wool and the color is 1420. I love this brown. This is a gorgeous heathered brown. Um, I used a mini skein on the toes, but I used a strand of Lang reinforcing thread for socks. I used that in the heel as well as in the toe. So I expect these to last a lot longer uh, than the ones without the reinforcing thread. But anyway, this pattern is now available on my Ravelry website and my uh, Etsy website. I have a story to tell you later about my uh, my private website, my my dot com, and a, and a terrible thing that has happened. But anyway, uh, these were oh my gosh, I have my scissors in here. I've been looking for these. This is not the right pair to put in there. Okay. Those are found. I'm constantly losing my scissors. <sighs> Sorry if this feels like I'm all over the place already. I just got back from vacation the day before yesterday, and I normally take 
a few days to recover, but I had to get right back to work. Um, the kids are coming Friday, so I just, there's, I have a lot less time in between to get ready, so I do apologize if it seems rushed or a little hectic. Okay, so the next finished object. I love this thing. This is my Tip Top Tank, which is a free pattern. And this one is by Emily Baldwin. Baldwin? Baldwin. Um, I used four skeins, or 524 yards, of Baraco Meraki. Here is my finished tank. It has a split hem with some ribbing. As you can see, the back neck is higher than the front, which is a V-neck. Um, I did a three needle bind off for the, and I exposed my seam because I wanted it to be exposed in the back. I absolutely loved knitting this and I really really loved this yarn, the experience of it. The only thing I didn't like about it was if it split, but it really didn't it didn't split that often, so I'm very happy with it. And I plan because I had extra yarn. My original plan um was to knit the pattern that came with the yarn that I purchased with the yarn at the yarn store. However, after starting it, I just wasn't feeling it. So I changed my mind and went with this free pattern by Maker Maker El Emily Baldwin. But now that I have two skeins left, or at least a skein and a half left, I am thinking about creating the same pattern, only negative ease, because that one obviously has a lot of positive ease, and make it like a um, bralette type thing so that I could wear it in place of a bra, because this is that comfortable that I would want to do that. So that's my plan. We'll see what happens with that. And it took me... 10 days to knit the um, the tip top tank. I knit the size 5 which is a medium slash large. Next time I would knit the size small medium. Um, I used a US 4 and a US 6 and the Baraco Meraki is a sport weight yarn. a little hard to see it's blowing out but it's 71% cotton 24% hemp and 5% polyester and the color is 6017 so a really really pretty uh, what would you call this more like a tweed looking pink with lots of flecks of gray throughout and soft as anything once you know when you're working with it it doesn't hurt your hands at all I really highly recommend this yarn they were just having a sale on it too I noticed because a lot of the summer yarns are going on sale now which is nice so that's the tip top tank the next finished object is my second ranunculus so I knit my second ranunculus out of some DK weight Peruvian Highland wool that I had naturally dyed, held with a strand of mohair that I had naturally dyed. This is what's left over. And I am thrilled with the way this turned out, although it's still not blocked. But here it is, finished. And I love it so much. This little loopy here is just so that I can tell which side is the back. There are short rows um, on the front and the back of this. I knit the size 2, I believe. 
and I used US 8 for the uh, twisted rip and US 10, excuse me a second, um, US 10 for the body. And I, um, let's see, anything else about this? It took me nine days to finish, which is not bad at all for a full out sweater. But the pattern is just so much fun that you absolutely will want to knit and knit and knit and keep going and not stop. So it's a fast project. Everything about this sweater fits me great, except I think I mentioned to you before the neck is a little bit narrower than I like. So I am going to try to block that out um, when I when I do finally block it. It just it looks so pretty. I don't even know if it needs to be blocked. I just love it. I love how well the colors worked together because of the beautiful mohair that I held throughout. I'm just so happy with it. And the way that the sleeves turned out I think is really pretty. I did a little laddering here, but yeah, I love this one. I would put it on for you, but I would I would get too sweaty. So I will um, try to get some finished object photos for you. All right, so that was my second, third project, finished project. And let's move on to my fourth finished project, which is for my um, granddaughter, Charlie who has her very first loose tooth. She will be six coming up very soon. And um, so her mom, while I was on vacation in Vermont recently, she sent me a picture of this really cute little uh, crochet tooth fairy pillow. I'll try to show you a picture of that. And this is by Heather Corinne. So I she asked if I could crochet this for Charlie because her first loose tooth will be coming out soon and she wanted um, a place to put it, a safe place to put it. So I knit Charlie this little tooth with a spot in the back to put maybe a coin or a dollar, some money back there. And then <laughs> You just, it's very simple. It was a very easy project. And then you embroider the little eyes and the eyelashes on after and the little, the little mouth. Um, and then I added just some twine to hang it. You can add ribbon, you could crochet uh, a, a holder, but I just used a little bit of twine. And what else can I say? I used um, Plotulopi in the natural cream color, or actually it's a white, it's really more white. I was trying to get the whitest color I could for a tooth. Um, and that worked out really well, so I also stuffed it with the, what was left of the, um, the wheel or the cake of Plotulopi unspun wool and I just I love how soft it feels I think it's probably going to just get better with time and I have never crocheted with Plotulopi before but I absolutely this made me want to crochet a uh, blanket with it because it just feels amazing and you've got the little halo which is you could probably see that there so <laughs> I love this so much yeah, it's cute. So anyway, when Charlie comes up this weekend, um, I'm going to have a little birthday celebration for her because I won't be able to make it to her official party. So I'll have a little celebration for her a little bit early up here and give her a few gifts and, um, and this. Hopefully she will not lose her tooth before at least Friday or Saturday of this week. So this was a really easy, really fun pattern. I highly recommend it if you have anyone that needs or is going to be losing some teeth. That is it for finished objects. Let's get into works in progress. All right, the first one is called Bessie and this is by Jacqueline C. Slack. I have never knit a Jacqueline C. Slack pattern before. 
this was my first one, but I was excited to do so. Uh, I saw this on, I watch Aro Knits and Pearls, and Aro had knit, or was knitting one of these tees. So I decided I needed to knit one too because I had the exact yarn that it called for, which is always nice. Here's a picture of it. It's really, really cute. It's a wide neck, oversized, you know, loose fitting with positive ease t-shirt. And it called for Knit Picks Lindy Chain in fingering weight. And I had some in the color Sage Brush. And, um... Oh, please don't mind my my nails. I've been doing a lot of dyeing and they're they're quite stained right now. So, I apologize for that. It's not very nice. But here it is. And this is a 70% linen, 30% Pima cotton, so it does have a bit of a shine. This is a top-down tee knit with Let me check the needle size. Um, size, size five, US five needles, and I knit the size three, uh, 44 inch bust. There is six inches of positive ease. I started this on August 14th for some reference. Today, I believe is August 29th or 30th. So I'll show you how it's coming along so far. Now, this is, again, fingering weight, so it is slow. It's a slow one. I don't expect this one to be done anytime soon, but I did finish all of the yoke, um, the short rows. I did, I went back. You're supposed to go back and do the neckline at the end, but she does recommend that you go back and try the neckline out early because sometimes you need to adjust that and it's hard to try it on uh, if you haven't done that. Uh, there's also, you'll notice a button here in the back. That is my, uh, where I, I uh, changed skeins and woven the ends and it just happened to be right at the center back. So I'm gonna, I sewed in a little button so that I could um, easily tell which side was the front and which side was the back. So this is all I have so far. Like I said, I've I separated for the sleeves before I went on vacation, and that's all that I got knit on vacation. So I did a lot more talking than I did knitting. But I love the color. I love the drape of it. I um I am worried though that the neckline might be a little bit too big. I tried it on and it, it definitely covered my shoulders. But a friend of mine pointed out that I tend to knit a lot of my things bigger than they probably should be. So I'm really going to work on trying not to do that. I think um, I see myself as, as bigger than I am. I think some of us, you know, have that problem. It's like a mental block. So I always tend to go for the bigger than the smaller. So I really want to work on that because this, this could have been a little smaller, especially in the arm hole. Um, I feel like my Anker uh, cardigan that I knit in the bulky weight yarn could have been smaller. I just feel like I do do that a lot, and I'd like to work on that. But I'm enjoying this. It's fun to just knit round and round and round, right? <laughs> Who doesn't love that? Yeah, that never bores me, really, because I always need to do some kind of TV or pod podcast watching uh, knitting. And that brings me to my last, my last, um, sorry about that, my last work in progress. Oh, have you ever heard of a yarn curse? Is there such a thing? Because this yarn that I, I really love it, it is nothing against the yarn. Let me grab a skein here. And I've shown you this yarn so many times. This is the Hobby Tweed Delight. This beautiful clay color. 
which I just love it. I love everything about it. It's an 85% wool, 10% acrylic, 5% viscose, um, 109 yards for 50 grams, so 218 per 100 gram skein. And I have tried to knit so many things with this yarn. I think it's a curse. I don't know. Uh, I showed you last time I was working on the um, Kamori cardigan. This beautiful cardigan by Melody Hoffman of Bee Mandarins. But I decided after working about this far of the body panel that you knit back and forth side to side, you know, not in the round, and it was all lace, and it needed to be really <laughs> long. I wasn't enjoying it. It was too much paying attention. It was just too too tedious for me. I knew I would never get through it. I just, I wanted that cardigan so badly, but I know myself well enough to know it's not happening. So after all that, I remembered a pattern that my lovely friend Amber of a lovely yarn podcast. I'm sure you all watched that one already. She, uh, some two years back, two years or so ago, I remember she had, she had test knit for me a cardigan. And then it was shortly after that, or it was shortly before that, that she knit um, the Hyla sweater by September Knits. Here is, this is the only picture in the pattern, but it's a cable top-down raglan sweater. Uh, Rachel Reese is the author of September Knits. So I had purchased this way back then, and then for some reason never knit it. Or I looked at it and thought it might be too much. Again, I need some, uh, sometimes I need focus knitting, but other times I don't. So I was ready for some focus knitting and I decided to cast it on because I loved Amber's version so much that I just needed it. So the Komori was put aside or maybe for never and I cast this on instead I tore out the Komori because I was determined to use this yarn. And this is how far I've gotten so far. Now the the front the right sides and the wrong sides of this look they look really similar, so I have to be careful. I've already had to tear this out once, but let me try, <laughs> try to show you it. So we go like this, wait, here we go. All right, yes, this is it. Here is the beginning of my my Hyla pullover. You can see that it's a lot of, um, there's a lot of garter there, so you do have to purl, so you have to like purling to do this, um, which I don't mind. I do not mind purling in the round at all. But right now, I'm at the part where I'm still working on those increases. You know what, I showed it to you wrong. I'm sorry guys, this, is, this has been a bit of a struggle for me, I'm not going to lie. Like I said, it's the curse of the yarn. This is a v-neck in the front, that looks so much more normal now. <laughs> ah, I'm sorry. So yes, this is a v-neck, and there's the v, and um, short rows in the back, and... You know what threw me on this one, I think, and I can't give away too much because obviously this is a paid for pattern if I hadn't said that. The beginning of round switches up and it changes to right here. And that just threw me for a while. I was really thrown. Also, there's just a lot going on and a lot of stitch markers. I want to say it's 12 plus a beginning around marker. See, there's a lot of keeping track of this one too, but it is more enjoyable for sure than the other experience I was having with the Komori. So to each his own, we all, you know, have projects that we, we feel like they're worthy of focus. This one is worthy of my focus and I will finish this one. You heard me. Curse or no curse, I'm finishing it. 
But if you've ever had a, a yarn curse, let me know. It drives me crazy. I'm determined. I'm determined to finish my stash up. And this has been stashed for way too long. So stay tuned. Hopefully next time I'll be a lot further on my Hyla sweater. Did I tell you? I started it on August 18th, by the way. I could give you the needle size too. That would be helpful. Um, so US 7. Then for the, when I get to the bottom hem, I will use a US 5. For the sleeves, a US 7. And then for the ribbing of the neckline, it's another five. So fives and sevens. Super fun. And look at this adorable little bag. I just love this one. This is by Little Robin Cottage. She makes some of my favorite project bags. It's got uh, snaps instead of zipper because I get a lot of things stuck in my zippers I've been learning so I'm trying to avoid that all right the last section is kind of a doozy but I'm going to try to get through it but this would be my uh, acquisitions so let's see just to keep just for the sake of time. I think I will um, be really quick about showing you. So we'll start with some de-stash yarn that I picked up from a friend. So I'm just going to quickly show you the skeins. I'm so excited to try out some of these yarn companies that I have never had the opportunity to try because I mean what could be more fun than that they all go really well together too the, the collection was curated quite well but I have no idea what I'll be making with this gorgeous yarn, but I could not pass up um, such a wonderful deal on a D-stash. No way, no how could I pass that up, so. But like, you guys, I'm so excited, so excited. Here's the last few, these are naturally Wait, was that one naturally? These were naturally dyed. I have some others too that I pulled aside. This is not all of them, but these two were naturally dyed. And then this is a uh, Malabrigo sock. So much fun. This is most of them. <laughs> oh, wow. Yep. Oh. Okay, and then uh, my friend Marie came over a couple weeks ago so we could record our uh, Woodland Knitting Retreat video, which by the way, registration is September 1st. Do not miss out. And then I need a side to side one. She had an extra skein of this Sea Isle cotton that she knit her, when she test knit her pajama cardigan 2.0 for me, she used this yarn and she really, really loved it. So she brought me this extra skein that she had. And this is in the uh, gray color. It's called Glo Gloucester Gray. Gloucester Gray. Is that backwards? I think it's backwards. I don't know if it is, but anyway, so she said that she loved knitting her pajama cardigan out of this 
Um, and as you know, I didn't love knitting mine out of the Mungo. I loved the end result, did not like the process. And I need to knit a 2.0 for myself. So I picked up three more skeins so that now I have enough for, and I am going to knit the small because I've learned my lesson. Pajama cardigan out of this gorgeous yarn. So I cannot wait to see how it turns out. I picked this up at Michigan Fine Yarns. And three of them were $43.32. So that just gives you an idea of the cost. So my pajama cardigan will be in the $60 range if you totaled up the price of all of those. Okay, then <laughs> we went on vacation. So we went on vacation with my sister and a bunch of family, and it was so much fun. We went up to uh, Averill, Vermont, and then we went over the border to Canada two different times. So the first time we did some sightseeing, and I went across this crazy, crazy high uh, bridge that was over this crazy, crazy deep gorge. It scared the life out of me. I am so afraid of heights, but Joe held on to me and I looked like I was a hundred years old walking across that thing, but it's a suspension bridge just for, just for pedestrians. But like, if you just move a little bit, the thing moved, uh, it was awful. I didn't enjoy it. Once we got over it, though, over to the other side, we had a beautiful nature walk through the forest, and it was just gorgeous, everything about it. Then, the next day, um, just my sister and I, my husband and her husband, went back to Quebec so that we could hit up a yarn shop. And it was, it was not called EstelleYarns.com. This is just the bag that I got my goodies in. It was called, and I will put some footage here for you so you can take a peek, Boutique Tri Knit Tea. against your arm. Yeah. Honestly, it's fine. I work with it a lot. So, but um, I love it. Wonderful. Oh, yeah. I loved this yarn shop and you'll see why. But I just will quickly show you what I picked up. So, it was so hard to decide because I had never seen some of these yarns before, but I got these two Sun Niskarn silk mohair in this beautiful pink color. I'll put all the information in the show notes of everything I talk about today. Um, I also picked up some, I've seen this uh, by other podcasters, Ilamari. 
And this was on sale. I got color 81, which is this natural cream color. And this yarn is 85% organic cotton and 15% baby alpaca in a fingering weight. No idea what I'm going to make, but it might become a ranunculus. And then the last thing I got was this tiny little thing. This is called Zilana Air. This is a brushed. It's blended cashmere and brush tail possum down. So of course that led me down this whole rabbit trail of what in the world is brush tail possum. But that apparently these possum run rampant in New Zealand and they are a real nuisance so now they are using their, their down to make this gorgeous yarn and it's super warm, a lot warmer than merino yarn. And the reason I picked this up, this was $24. This is a lace weight, it's only 25 grams, 191 yards, $24. However, the reason I did it was because on display was the most gorgeous pair of mittens with the most gorgeous stitch pattern I've ever seen. So they took one skein and you'll have a little bit left over, she said to knit them. The pattern hasn't even come out yet. It's called something like Coastal... Wait, she wrote it down for me. The pattern is called Coastal Drift Mittens. And the shop owner had test knit for, for the um, designer. So she's not sure when it's coming out, but she thinks it'll be soon. So in anticipation, I picked this up so that I too could have a gorgeous pair of those mittens. They're luxury mittens. I will only wear them when I, you know, I won't wear them out shoveling the snow or anything like that. I'll keep them special. So yeah, stay tuned for that because I can't wait for you to see how beautiful they, these mittens are. The last thing I'll show you, no, not the last thing, but one of the last things, my niece brought me a gift and it's this awesome book called Knit Mitts, Your Handy Guide to Knitting Mittens and Gloves by Kate Atherley, which I'm sure you've heard of her. And this has some, some adorable, adorable mittens. Look at how cute these look. Oh, I love those so much. I might have to make those right away. There's so many cute mittens in here and different, different styles, fingerless, you name it. They're great. Love this. Also, um, oh, where is it? I did dye some yarns. Um, I've been eyeballing so many speckled yarns that I want. There's one by Hedgehog Fibers called Teacup. I just can't, I can't handle how much I love it. I want it so bad. But I think they're like $35 a skein, so I'm, I'm struggling with that. But anyway, I thought I would, since I have some berry yarn of my own, I thought I would just buy a few, just a few acid dyes, and try to speckle something. And I did this, and I'll tell you what, it is so hard. Like, I'll show you how I did, but it's, it's not exactly how I expected it to turn out. <laughs> but here they are. Here are my two skeins. I'm sorry if they're being blown out. And my first attempt, really, at speckles. Well, not my very first attempt, but the first time trying it with acid dyes. And this is what I got. Yep, so there's those two. Very pink. And then the other two I did after. These are just a basic 7525 merino sock yarn. I went a little lighter this time because I knew that that was a bit bold and pink for me. And I was much happier with the result of these two. Um, but, but it's still not what I really was looking for. So... I tried. I'm not finished. I'm going to try one more time. And I think probably it's the type of thing that just pra with practice you can perfect it. But I'm really hoping 
for better speckles. More like, more like, um, I guess. See? I love the way that Naughty Pine Fiber Co. does her speckles, but I'm sure it takes a ton of practice to get that good. But anyway, that was really fun to do, uh, just to play around with it. It's so different than natural dyeing, you know? So finally, uh, we get to chatter. So I will keep this really quick because I just know this is going over my 30 minutes that I want it to be. But um, I wanted to quickly tell you a little story about my web so shop, which is now gone because I had to quickly and frantically shut it down. So I had a terrible incident where one day, it was like 10 in the morning, I'm sitting there and I get a, I get a sale. I sell a pattern for one of my um, little dress, little dress little princess dress that I had designed. So it was on my website, so I see that I sold one. And then I quickly see that I sold another, and then another, and then another. And then they just keep coming in every minute, another sale, another sale. So I quickly went and tried to figure out what was going wrong. By the time I got back to my cell phone, there were 450 sales. And I knew this wasn't right. There's no way anyone's going to buy that many patterns. I could see where the, the sale was coming from. It was from the United States. I could, I could see the information. The name was just sort of initials. That wasn't giving me a lot. Um, I started to really freak out and think someone had hacked my website. And it didn't feel good at all. So I... I just quickly and frantically shut it down and unpublished the web shop part of it. And I left up the rest of it, you know, the blog and the, you know, my email list and all that I left because that's been a ton of hard work. But as sad as it was, I didn't really feel like I had a choice. I reached out to my uh, web host and I told them what was going on. Unfortunately, they don't have a phone number you can call them. They just have an email. So I had to wait in between our messages between 12 and 24 hours each time, which was killing me. <laughs> it was really tough. But after, I think it was three days, I finally got an answer from them, and they said they do not, did not see any, any um, suspicious activity or any hacking or anything unusual, even though what just happened was beyond un unusual for me. So, um, we will see what happens. I have monthly deposits, so on September 1st, this large deposit is supposed to go into my account. I have a feeling that's probably when the hackers will reach out to me and want some kind of a refund, and it's going to be a, a really interesting, um, you know, it's going to really play out very interesting, but... It was sad, and I don't feel comfortable now opening that web shop back up again. So for the time being, I'll just be selling my um, patterns on Ravelry and Etsy. And the only way you can get my naturally hand-dyed yarn is by being a patron. At least for now, that's how that's going to go. So, Oh, speaking of which, the last thing I wanted to show you was I have... Um, the Patreon yarn is all ready to go. It's going to be shipped out tomorrow, and I wanted to show you how I have them prepared this time. So here is the yarn, and it's in, it's just in these very cool... Let me try to get it out here. These really pretty pale pinks. It's so hard to see with the lighting here. It's kind of blowing it out, but... Real pretty pinks and pale yellows on the um, on that, and then I included a little sachet of lavender for everyone. So, got to keep those moths away, right? And then I just put them in this little bag. So that's the the gift that each of the um, patrons will get this month. All 
right, I think that is everything for today. Um, as far as patterns being released, I just released the uh, Kulipa slip over yesterday and that went super well. I had a coupon code for 50% off for everyone. That expired, but I thought it'd be nice to do one just for YouTube. So if you wanna go on and get that Kulipa slip over, I'll put up a photo here. Go ahead and do that and just use the code YouTube50 for 50% off of that pattern. So, And then that is it for now. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. It's been really fun catching up with you. Um, and I will talk to you very soon. Thank you so much for stopping by. Bye now. Mm -hmm.